Hello, I'm Paul Nisi from FrontdoorsGamer.com here at PAX East 2013, standing with very special guests here, Rooster Teeth. I'm going to let them go down the line and introduce themselves. We have a nice big cast here for everyone. I'm Miles Luna. I am one of the writers of Ruby. Uh, I'm Kerry Shawcross. I'm one of the other writers of Ruby. Uh, Monty Ohm, uh, director and other stuff, creator, creator of Ruby. Shane Nuvo, animator, just try to keep it up with Monty. Passing down the line. <laughs> Teamwork, right. Yeah. All right, so we've seen Ruby. I've, I've seen the uh, the red and the white. The black was just uh, put out on Friday from your panel. How have you seen the reception so far? And I really have to touch on, I love the anime aesthetics of this. I'm a big fan of anime. The uh, fluid motion is amazing. I thought the action was great. Um, and we still have one more character to go, so that's like a big thing coming up. So. Uh, what inspired the anime look and the uh, feel of everything? What, what, what brought that feel to the game? Oh, I was distracted. What? what? What inspired the anime look? You see her over there? Anyways, what, what inspired the anime look? Uh, I mean, I love anime. That's, best, that's the best reason, you know? You guys love anime. What's your favorite anime? Oh, geez, it's hard to tell. Repeat the question. Repeat the question. What, say, say, my favorite anime Oh, is. my favorite anime... I, that's a hard question to answer. I mean, I just I just got watching all of... Go, uh, done, got, uh, just got done watching all of Ghost in the Shell again. I mean, it's, it's very... You know, because it's, it's recent in my mind, I'm going to say that. But I love a lot of different animes for different reasons, so it's hard to pick just one. Uh, Ghost in the Shell, I mean, Avatar counts for me. Uh, uh, I mean, all the basic ones even, Naruto, Bleach... Full Metal Alchemist. Full, Full Metal Alchemist. Soul Eater is a great one. Cowboy Bebop. Samurai Champloo. Uh, Coolie Coolie. Jesus. There, I mean, there's even like some motion picture ones that really stand high for me. And classic ones. Giant Robo is a great one. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Go uh, Ghost in the Shell movie is really good. Uh, Ninja Scroll. I've been an anime fan for the longest time. All right. Um... What does it take to make such a fluid, action-packed uh, episode like that? I know, even though the episodes are, they're full episodes, how long does it take? How much goes into making a single episode? Uh, well, it depends. The episodes are handled by a great deal of people. It's not just me. Uh, the stuff you've been seeing is, is the trailers where it's mostly just me and Shane. The episodes, on the other hand, are being handled by like a team of like about 15 people. That includes Miles and Carrie because they have to be written uh, and storyboarded out, which Miles handles, and uh, effects done by Carrie. Uh, uh, Carrie did actually help on some of the effects in the trailers, but uh, as far as the action sequences in the trailers go, it's uh, you know it's supposed to be. It takes some of them take a few weeks, some of them take uh, a few months. It does vary though. Like the Ruby one, I went straight off working on Red versus Blue. And uh, it took about two weeks. The Weiss one, that was a good month, month and a half. The Blake one was kind of on and off because I had some of it done while I was working on the Weiss one. And the yellow one, I, we've even got a little bit of that done right now. But it's, I have a feeling it's going to, we're going to have to dive right into that and just work on that one as well and do the show. Yeah. I mean, a big part of it is how much time we do have. Like, you did the Ruby one in two weeks. Yep. But if you could have, you probably spent like three or four weeks on it, you know. Yeah. It's just we don't have time sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, obviously, you guys got your start with the uh, Red versus Blue, everything like that. That was a known IP that you guys took and did the first real, first real machinima with it. Um, now you're introducing, what are some of the other things you're introducing besides Ruby? And I noticed that you're actually moving away from existing IP and creating your own. That's exciting to me to see what you guys can come up with. What brought that about? What do you try? What do you hope to bring with your with your own IP? So. Um, well, in terms of other things that have been announced, of course, uh, there's a second season of Immersion, which is a Rooster Teeth production. Um, Bernie has talked a little about Day 5. Um, <clears throat> and I think, I, I, obviously, I can't speak for everybody. You know, Bernie and uh, Matt and everybody has their own thing that they want to do. So I'm, I've lost my voice. Yeah, um, sure. But, I mean, it's, it's so awesome to have, you know, we're, we're, we've done Red versus Blue for 10 seasons now, going on to an 11th season. Um, and, you know... 
we have new audiences now. Achievement Hunter brought in a whole new group of audiences, and you know we're hoping we can bring in even more people. And I mean, for me, it's just it's cool. It's cool to be able to do something of your own, you know? Like, I love Red vs. Blue, and it was an honor to be able to help write Season 10 and work on Season 9 with everybody. But um, it's it's just a fun experience. What do you think, guys? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just... We, when we have uh, when we're working in an IP, it gives us a lot of freedom, but it also comes with some limitations. And the good thing about doing our own thing is that we can do whatever we want. They don't have there's no approval process, no anything. You know, it's like the people we've worked with have been exactly, and the people we work with so far have been great, and we pretty much have that creative freedom. But this this it's just it makes it a little bit easier and a little bit nicer, and it just lets us get our voice out there a little bit more. I, I would also I would also stress like Rooster Teeth is an ensemble of a company. We do so many different things. One of the things to, to mention, for example, that's going to uh, branch on, like, for example, J.R. Dan, he does the animated adventures. That could be so much. The podcast yeah. is another great thing that has so much, like, it has its own feet and just it's kind of those things we would just do. To yeah. do a show like Ruby, we get excited about the idea of doing our own thing because uh, as Rooster Teeth, as a production studio, just to have all our shows uh, pretty much like this umbrella of a network of many different things we're always trying to encompass uh, new talent so we're always out there like uh, looking for new things Ruby is just one of them yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> he just seems like he got dragged in here <laughs> all right so you just you mentioned yellow earlier do we have a release date for that do we know when that's coming out well I mean if uh, as for the yellow trailer, you know, it just came out two days ago. We got the RTX. Blake, the Blake trailer did. I mean, uh, the Blake trailer came out two days ago, and the yellow trailer, uh, and RTX, we've, we've stated that the premiere of the show will happen. The yellow trailer, probably going to be somewhere in the middle of that, obviously. Uh, as soon as we can get it done, we have kind of a date we're looking at. Uh, that's about as much as we know. Yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of RTX, uh, you started that only recently. I know a lot of people have gone to that, really enjoyed it. Uh, how big and what are you like hoping to do with RTX? Just are you hoping to make it another Pax East, like in, for the mid mid of the country? Well, I mean, uh, we're not really the ones that throw RTX. Yeah. We're just kind of there and enjoying it. Well, but I mean, I mean, uh, I think it would be amazing if RTX could be as big as Pax. Pax is known all over the world, and it's. I mean, if you could turn the camera around, you would see thousands of people having so much fun doing like at a place they love actually because of where we are you would see a black curtain uh, but if you look past that curtain you see an awesome convention around I, I do know I mean we do have a very close relationship with PAX our guys have been going to PAX since day one and have been big supporters and uh, I know that uh, the, uh, PAX has been very thankful for us and our involvement so you know we're now we're they're helping us out now and we're thankful for their involvement as well so, in or, you know, this is a very symbiotic relationship we have with uh, this convention. It's just, you know, I mean, the biggest thing is that we're, we're, the one in, we're the one in the middle of the U.S. That's like that region that's missing something. And they're, they're, they, they, they love being involved with us. Do you have any thoughts, Shane? Jane? Pax is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Pax is cool. Pax is cool. Pax is cool. All right. Um, any final thoughts, any words you want to get out there before we end this? Do you want to say anything about the Blake trailer? Do we want to talk about anything about the Blake trailer? We didn't get to talk about our panel? Uh, Blake, uh, Blake trailer was awesome because we got to just put a little more peek into the world. If I could go back and do the root, more of the Ruby trailer and the Weiss trailer, like it, it comes with planning. Like the Ruby trailer I did before we even knew who the voice actress was. Before we had a script, I just had vague ideas. Essentially, the Ruby trailer was not a tra I mean, it was more of a trailer for her gun than it was for her character. You know, the, I consider these trailers, I, you know, we call them trailers because there isn't a better word. Uh, we, I, I stated that they're more like vignettes for the characters. Ruby's trailer was a resume for her weapon, which I was like the first pitch I gave to Bernie about the whole sniper sight mechanic. Uh, the Weiss trailer, just the same, was probably the hardest one to make because it was the one. It was one of the ones that was hard to make interesting. We've seen magic before, and I have to do. I'm, every time I do something, I have to try and make it unique. And we found a different way to make it unique. My favorite thing about the black trailer is she seemingly takes a back seat in terms of action, but the show isn't entirely action. And she's doing great actions, but I framed it. I shot it in a way where she's almost like she's the apprentice, but she makes a bigger statement by the end of the trailer with her words. And by saying goodbye, the trailer became about her. We knew it was the Blake trailer. It 
It was called the Blake trailer. It's, it, it, it opened up with her and it ended with her. The, what you would think is the meat of the trailer was focused on the second character, but you know, it's, it, the trailer passed on from being action to being about her character. And so that was the best thing about doing it. That's why it's my favorite one. Uh, yeah, just in general, please watch Ruby. Uh, if you can come out to RTX, we'll have it there, and if not, it'll be online sometime after that. Yeah, uh, we've put our heart and soul into it. Um, lots of dumb jokes, lots of cool action sequences, and more than anything, characters that we really, really love and we think are going to come to life on the screen. Shane. Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, thank you guys very much. I'm looking forward. I, I love the trailer so far. I'm really looking forward to the storyline for Ruby. I want to see more. Uh, everybody should check it out. Go to roosterteeth.com. See you at RTX. RTX. Yes, Let's check it out. See the trailers. Uh, we'll probably put a few uh, pictures in this video as well. And it's a B-roll. And go, go check it out. I, I highly recommend it. If you love anime, you like action, even if you don't like anime, it has just an amazing style. You'll be really impressed with how fluid and action-packed it is. And I know, uh, like, I watched it twice <laughs> in the same sitting. Um, so, all right. So this is Paul Nisi signing off from, from uh, PAX East 2013 with Rooster Teeth. Thanks.